Yeah, good evening. Now, we had completed the previous chapter, chapter 21, so we are going to start chapter 22. Chapter 22 is all about how you can worship Krishna. Krishna himself is going to give us an understanding of how anybody can worship Krishna in whichever form. Now, we are going to understand that from different perspective. So, we are doing chapter 22 of the Uddhav Gita, verse 1 onwards. Uddhava said, O Lord, the adored one of the devotees, please describe to me the mode of worshipping thee through ceremonials, how and through what aid the devotees worship thee. So, after Uddhava had got the entire explanation of what is devotion and how to do the devotion aspect, now he says, can you please explain to me how your devotees worship you? So, Uddhava's way of asking Krishna is, can you please explain to me what the devotees actually do to worship you? So, if you can just let me know. Verse 2 of chapter 22. Of the Uddhav Gita, sages like Narada, Bhagavan Vyas and Acharya Brahaspati, the son of Angiras, repeatedly describe this as a way of liberation for men. Chapter 22, verse 3 and 4 of the Uddhav Gita, O Lord, who glorifies thy devotee, that instruction which after it has been issued from thy lotus lips, Lord Brahma told his sons, Bhrigu and others, and the Lord Shiva to Goddess Parvati, that I consider the best and the most suitable means of well-being for all castes and orders of life, including even the Shudras and the women. So, Uddhava is asking this question, how, do, how does anybody worship you, Krishna? Can you tell me in the same manner, how sages like Narada, see when Narada comes to Goloka, he has got the right to go to Goloka by the way. And he has been a witness to a lot of things over there as well. So how does Narada pray to you? Or Bhagwan Vyas, Vyas Dev is the one who has written the Mahabharata also. I am sure you know this. He has also dictated this Bhagavat Puran to his son Sukhdev. And Sukhdev in turn had told it to Parikshit. So you will find that Vyasdev is nothing but the avatar of Vishnu himself. Sri Krishna's material worldly avatar which, which was taken only for the purpose of writing those beautiful scriptures. So how does he worship you? And then Acharya Brahaspati. Now Brahaspati is who? Who, is, who do you think is the Brahaspati? Brahaspati is the guru of all the gods. All the gods, demigods that are there. Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Everybody, everybody. Everybody is Gurudev. Is Brahaspati. So Brahaspati also worships Krishna. So how does he worship? Describe this as a way of liberation for men. So tell me this method by means of which men can get liberated by worshipping you after being a devotee of yours. Then he says, O Lord who glorifies thy devotee, that instructions after which it has been issued through thy lotus lips, Lord Brahma told his son, the same instruction which you had given Krishna to Brahmaji. And Brahmaji in turn had instructed his children. He has a number of children, I am sure you know that. So he had instructed his children. Bhrigu and others. Then Bhrigu Muni and every other. And Lord Shiva had told even Parvati how to worship Krishna. So even the knowledge had been given to Brahma and to Shiva, 
and it was given in such a manner so that they can pass it on to others so that everybody can worship Krishna in a particular fashion and what is the best fashion that it has to be and the most suitable means see everybody has got their own means their own methodology of worshipping Krishna so everybody may have some definite methodology you know you can have your own methods you will find that the the entire universe is so varied so beautiful and different like what is there in Japan may not be there in India what is there in India may not be there in Europe and what is there in Europe may not be there in other countries so I hope you got the point so how did they worship you so please let me know that and also tell us that which will be the well-being for all castes see the castes which we are talking about have come about by the action of the gunas I'm sure you know that caste is not the way in which it is represented caste is represented by means of gunas and then he is talking about the shudras and the women now that is the working class is the shudras basically shudras are not that which they are made out to be they come from what is called as the whole world is like that nowadays because everybody is literally rolling in tamas whether it is a man or a woman you will find that it is extremely difficult for somebody to be either rajasik or sattvic sattvic is literally out of the window there is hardly anybody who is sattvic we cannot even identify one person whom we can say he is sattvic it, it's actually impossible nowadays because everybody is succumbing to this particular yuga this yuga is called the kali yuga and you know it very well and in the kali yuga what exactly is going to happen everybody's downfall is going to be there and that is the reason why you will find that everybody today is either a Vaishya or a Shudra. There is hardly any Brahman. Brahman means the knower of Brahma. Absolutely Sattvic in nature. Who is Sattvic? Even those who wear orange color clothes are no way Sattvic. Sattva Guna is all about goodness. Where is goodness in the world today? And that is the reason why Brahmans in this world have disappeared. The Kshatriyas are very few. The, the rulers among men. Please understand this. Those who have Sattva and Rajas in them. Now the mixture of Sattva and more of Rajas. Where is it? There is Tamas also mixed in it. That is why you cannot find even a lot of good rulers people who can rule others not necessarily kings and queens no this is we are not talking about the kings and the queens the kings and the queens are shudras themselves so don't bother about trying to understand that there is some king or some queen whom we can call as you know kshatriya there is no kshatriya kshatriya doesn't mean the fighting people also no way no way kshatriya is all about sattva and rajas Sattva may be 30%, 40% and less rest is Rajas. Where is that kind of a person? Again, very, very minuscule quantity. Vaishyas? Yes, there are lots of Vaishyas. Because the mixture of the two Gunas, which is called Rajas and Tamas, is found. They are still there. Yes, there will be Vaishyas. They are dealers. They deal things. They do a lot of you know money making and businesses and activities. They do what is called transactions. So transactional people are there in this world. But the rest of the world, everybody, all included, everybody is tamasic in nature. That is why Shudras. Now, when the creation was happening, the way in which it has been created, that is why it is mentioned in the scriptures, women, because it is a specific activity that is required. But if I have to say that today, because of the Kali Yuga, everybody, there are no men in this world, by the way. 
Now, if you look around also, do you find any alpha male anywhere? I doubt if there is an alpha male. Hardly anybody. I don't even know whether there is an alpha male. Even if there is an alpha male, he is more female than a male. The qualities have completely reversed out. So there are no alpha males, but there are alpha females, 100%. They are very, very high in the pecking order, surely. So now let us move ahead. So we are doing chapter 22 of the Uddhav Gita, verse 5. O Lotus Eyed One, O Lord of the rulers of the universe, tell me the ardent devotee about this way that unloses the bounds of karma. See, karma is the, the one thing which makes us keep on coming back again and again and again and again. Our bhandar, our entire godown of karmas are there. We have massive amount of sanchit karma, accumulated karma from so many lifetimes. This lifetime, you cannot even imagine. It has gone to the power of N. Okay, so don't even bother thinking, you know, how many karmas, endless karmas. That is why nobody is getting liberated in today's day and age. How can there be liberation? Liberation is next to impossible in today's day and age. And that is the reason why he is asking, in this current yuga of karma, how do you remove these karmas? O lotus eyed one, O lord of the rulers of the universe, tell me thy ardent dev devotee about the way that unloses the bonds of karma. So can you please explain to me how these bonds of karmas are loosened so that there are no karmas left. So now we are moving to the next verse. Krishna is going to give his response. How this worship has to be done. Now this is a chapter which is going to be faster because I am sure you know Vaidik practice is the way in which everybody does. Most of the Indians and nowadays even my own disciples who are there across the world also do these kind of practices. So the way of Vaidik practice, Vaidik methodology of how this has to be done. Okay, so we will see. So we are doing chapter 22 verse 6 from the Uddhav Gita. The Lord said, There is no end of Uddhava to the course of ceremonial worship, which is really limitless. So I shall give you a brief but accurate description in its order. How many ways of worshipping are there? <laughs> Millions, billions. There is no way of saying it. this is the one. But Krishna says, I will give you what I know as the best way of worshipping me. So it is Krishna's way of telling you that this is the way you can worship me as a devotee. Alright? So he is going to now tell us. And it is supposed to be the accurate description. And it is in a particular order. So let us see. We are doing chapter 22 of the Uddhav Gita, verse 7. There are three ways of worshipping me. Vaidik, Tantric and Mixed. One may worship me by any one of the three methods that appeals to one. Now there are various methods of worship. Okay. Vaidik. There is a process. There are things involved. Material worldly objects are involved and that is the way you can worship me. That is one, Vaidik. There is a methodology of using certain things in the world. Hmm? Like some wood, some you know stones, all those kind of things. So we will come to it. There are some flowers and so on and so forth. He is going to give us an understanding of all that. Or he says, there is Tantric method. Tantric is one which is internal. It is nothing in external. So we are not moving outside the body to worship him. We are doing inside the body worship. Using this body itself as a tool. And how do you worship? And then he says the third one is called the mixed. External as well as internal. 
Sometimes it may so happen that external objects are not available. Let us say you are in a place, you are in Americas and you may not be having a joystick, a nagarbatti as we call it. Maybe they don't allow it over there. They don't allow lobans, you know, the ones which they burn during, uh, you know, the descented ones, you know, some kind of a, a gum which is burnt, which gives a very beautiful scent. If you come over here, you will find the lo loban battis and all that are there. Uh, whenever you see it over here, you will come to know. So those, they may not be available there. But can there be a substitute for that? Yes, at that point in time, you have to do the mixture of the two. Maybe sometimes you don't have anything outside, but you can make it by means of internalizing it. How you can do it? internally by means of your own body you can do that so he is saying there are three methods so we are going to understand them slowly so we are doing chapter 22 of the Uddhav Gita verse 8 learn it of me with faith how having a due season his investiture with a holy thread according to the injunctions of a particular Veda a man should worship me with devotion now, this is a, a rider over here. The rider is, you have to be invested with a thread. Do you get the point? We have the thread ceremonies. Now you will say, just now it was mentioned that women also can worship and everybody can worship. But they don't have thread ceremonies. Men have thread ceremonies. And that to devout Hindus have thread ceremonies. There are other people who are worshipping Krishna, but they may not be having this thread. Okay? It is the way in which they call, in Judaism, they call it Bar Mitzvah. You know, those kind of, when you grow up, you know, growing up. <laughs> those kind of ceremonies. So, when, an, when a Hindu grows up, he is given a thread to, you know, wear it around his body. All right, and then uh, there is a method, all right, which they have to follow. So here he says, learn it of me with faith. So please have faith in what I am saying. Having in due season, that is, there are certain times in the year and certain times, a lifetime in a life, there are certain times when you have to go through this investor ceremony. That is this ceremony of growing up all right now like i said everybody is eligible personally speaking i never had it this body never had that investor ceremony so the, it's a very funny thing which happened when i was asked now naturally they will ask me at the time of marriage and various other times so i was asked did you go through this i said no no i did not <laughs> And I have not even, you know, punctured my ears. Okay. So, I, you can't call anything. So, in this particular body, there is hardly any sign which can say Hindu or Muslim or whatever that is. There is no way of knowing. So, when that was asked, so I said no. So, they said only for the sake of, you know, because the Panditji is there. So, we'll just do something. And it was a two-minute ceremony. I said, come on, what is this? Why are you playing around with it? Don't bother yourself about it because it needs faith. Most important word is called faith. If you have faith, anything is possible. When you have faith in Krishna, you can consider yourself given this investor, this thread. And don't bother about it in today's day and age because it is an archaic kind of an old kind of a ceremony sometimes people do sometimes people insist on doing and that is the reason why you have to do mom there may be people abroad there may be people in various places who is going to do that hardly anybody that is why so now this is done by means of according to the injunctions of a particular veda you may belong to a certain class of veda you know in your ephemeral chart it is written which group you come to you are from Samvedi, Rigvedi you know 
the Brahmins are known for that. But like I said, today there are no Brahmins. So let us not get into all these things. So we move to the next verse. We are doing Uddhav Gita chapter 22 verse 9. A twice born should worship me, his teacher, with sincerity and devotion by means of various presents in an image or sacrificial ground or fire or sun or water or in his own heart. So now Krishna is giving us the complete process. Twice born. Like I said, today the concept of twice born is not what was there in the past. Because a Brahman only can be twice born. Like I said, there are no Brahmins left in this world. Because Brahmins means you have to be 100% Sattvic. There are no 100% Sattvic people in this world. Everybody is contaminated by Tamas. So let us re rule that out. So here, twice born. Now who is twice born in today's day and age? If you have been, now if you are, have a Guru in your life, see the words. If you have a guru in your life and he has done your Khan Mantra or maybe you have him in your life, that's it. You don't need to maybe have been given a Khan Mantra for that matter. Not necessary. Initiation might not have happened but yet you have a guru. So you can be called as twice born because first rule itself, how do you find a guru? That is the toughest question. If you go to all these forums across the world, you will find that people are drifting because they all want to know how to find a Guru. There are lots of people in India and the world who are thinking, I need a Guru in my life. But how do you find a Guru? This is the biggest question. They don't know. But let us say you have him. So, here it is important. If you have him, then you are called twice born. Because the first birth has happened because of your body. It's your body, which was born to some parents of yours. Some parents, some father and some mother has given you birth. Then you have a whole load of relatives with them. But, the moment you meet your Guru and you are fully devoted to him, then when he gives you the initiation, at that point in time, you are leaving your old body outside. Your old self is dead. Then you have the new self. Your Guru will give you a name, maybe. Your Guru may give you a Khan Mantra, maybe, again, depends on the Guru himself. And the way in which he meets you and does what he is supposed to, it is called twice born. Then you are no longer having those old parents as yours, okay? They are not your parents at all. Your Guru is your father and mother. Your Guru is everything of yours. He is your brother, he is your sister, he is your mother, he is your father, he is everybody, including the God. This we had done, isn't it, in the last few days. Those who have attended the satsang will know that I had said, Krishna says, I am the Guru also, the Guru is me. Right? So the twice born would be that way. Hmm? That means you are not that son of somebody or daughter of somebody. No way. Once you have a Guru, then those people are no longer connected to you. That is why if you have a Guru who does all the rituals before giving you a new name and a new you know, clothes to wear, the shave off your head and all that, and he tells you to take a bath and come back and then he does what is, you know, that is some, there is an actual act which happens which is called the Tarpana. That is, you are literally consigning your own body, the old body, old you, to the flames. You are basically burning your old body. Now think, if you are getting a new body, can you say that you are so and so, your, my name is so and so, I am so and so, son and daughter, can you say these words? It is not correct, no? You are no longer their son. 
it is like you are born again. You have taken a new body. And then you are the child of the Guru. Got it? Now here he is saying, the twice born should worship me, his teacher. Who am I? The teacher, the Guru. I am the Guru. You have to worship me. How do you worship me? With sincerity and devotion. Sincerely and with absolute devotion. By means of various presents. Normally at the investiture ceremony. As they say the twice born at that time. And here when you meet the Guru. You have to offer a certain gift as a present, you know, to the Guru. Offer him something, little token. So offer him certain present. So when you get initiated, at that time, offer him certain things. In an image. Now how do you worship him? You can worship him in an image or the sacrificial ground or fire, or sun, or water, or in his own heart. You can worship your Guru directly if you have Krishna in the form of a Guru. Right? So there is a Guru. He is Krishna's avatar. So you worship him like that. Number one. Or you can do it in the sacrificial ground. Now if you don't have a Guru, then the sacrificial ground where you can perform sacrifices. In the, in the material world, you can do sacrifices. You know those different, different kinds of homes that a person does. Or in the fire. You can light a fire and you can consider the Guru in that. And pray to him. Or water. So Krishna can be worshipped in any of these forms. Or in your own heart. Like I told you, he's going to tell you about in your own being. So think he is in your heart and then worship him there. So it is internal worship. Now how you have to do this? So let us see. We are doing chapter 22 of the Uddhav Gita verse 10. Now these things, most of these things are slightly older. So I will give you the new techniques and the new methodology. 10. Cleansing his teeth, he should first have a bath for the purification of his body. The bath is to be accompanied by both Vaidik and Tantric mantras and the use of earth etc. So, first and foremost, you have to be clean. Which does not mean that you can wear dirty clothes from yesterday's day. Okay? Otherwise people say, you know, I took a bath but I am going to wear yesterday's clothes. You clean yourself thoroughly. Brush your teeth. Take a nice bath and after the bath, while doing the bath, you can do the mantra jab. If you have been given a mantra, do the mantra jab. Whatever mantra that has been given or whatever prayers that you have been told to do by your Guru, do those things. Whatever they are, prescribed ones. And then you have to do this in such a manner that you are cleansing your inner as well as the outer body. Got that? So we do the next verse. So we are doing chapter 22, Uddhav Gita, verse 11. Through the Vedas, I have enjoined certain rites such as morning, noon and evening prayers. Along with them, we should perform the right determination. With right determination, my worship which roots out karma. So, Krishna is saying, in the Vedas, he has given, there are three times in a day you can do the prayers. They are called Sandhyas. I mean, sure, some of you may be doing, some of you may not be knowing also about it. Don't bother so much about it. Just ensure that you are doing your prayers on a regular basis. Morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you feel like prayer time is any time. Don't worry about it. Any time is prayer time. Now, they have to be performed with right determination. Not with the, oh, I am thinking of something and I want to do it. Half-heartedly don't do. With full determination. Yes, I am going to pray to Krishna with 100% effort and I am going to put my heart and soul in the prayer. That is how it has to be done. And how the prayers have, be done, have to be done which roots out karma, which removes the karma from your life. Now, we go to the next verse. 
We are doing chapter 22 verse 12. Images are of eight kind. Those made of stone, wood, gold, clay, sand, jewels as well as painted and metal ones. Now, you can have any kind of image. Remember, your guru may not be there in front of you. Krishna may not be there in front of you. But at least you can keep an image. It represents that. It's a representative image. Now this image can be in any kind. He is given us, there are eight kinds of images. One which can be made with stone. Those who have gone to temples and all, you have seen the stone images over there. Second one is wood. Those who have gone to places like Puri, Jagannath Puri, those things are, the images over there are made of wood. Even in your own house, there may be an image made of wood. Gold. Yes. Nowadays, you can't have a big massive image of gold. But at least you can have a small image of gold, you know. Sometimes you can have. Gold is very expensive in today's day and age. So, it's okay. It doesn't matter. You may have a gold image. You may be a rich person. Have a gold image. Clay. Yes, there are clay images which we worship in India. I'm sure you have seen those who have come to India during the Ganesh Chaturthi or those who have come during the Navratri festival, they have seen clay images. The clay images are also there. Sand. You can make image in sand also. In jewels. Yes, there are images made in jewels also. You might have seen the lockets and all that. I'm sure you have seen that. As well as painting. There are some which are paintings. So some people do the drawing and the painting. So they can paint an image. Now, at that point in time, they didn't have those NFTs and, you know, <laughs> digital images. Krishna's time was the digital images. But now you can have digital image. So just imagine that that is a painted image. Alright? And it may be there on an iPad or some of those fancy <laughs> computers. Doesn't matter. That also is alright. No doubt about it. Or it can be a mental one. Mental one means... You just have to think about him. I told you, no, you have to think inwardly about it. So you can have any of these images. You can just think of Krishna in any of this one form. Doesn't matter whichever form that you feel like, you can use that form. So, <coughs> so we go to the next verse. We are doing Uddhav Gita chapter 22 verse 13. Images which are temples of God are divided into two other classes, movable and immovable. In worshipping through the immovable ones, O Uddhava, there is neither the ceremony of invocation nor that of veneration. Now, if you visit a temple, you will find there is one murti which is fixed over there. You cannot shake it, you cannot move it. It is literally like fixed in the ground. Alright? Now that murti cannot be shaken or it cannot be moved around. Nobody can move it around. But there is another murti which is there in front. Okay? It is in an image. The image has been made more or less the same kind. But that is called Utsav Murti where they can take it right around the village also or they can take it in the temple and roam around with it doing all kinds of puja. So these are two kinds. So if you go to the temple you will always find there are two kinds of images. One which is a fixed one and one which is a movable one. The movable one is meant for all purposes. Like if you want to put some water on top of it, this, that, quite a lot of things that you can put. So it can be done. But if that other image is made of sand or clay, you know, you can't put water and stuff like that on it. It is going to get destroyed. So you normally don't do much for that. The big image over there, you do everything for the small image. That is all right. So we move to the next verse. So we are doing chapter 22 verse 14 of the Uddhav Gita. Right. With regards to the movable image, there is an option about this. But in the case of the sacrificial ground etc, they are compulsory. Bathing is performed with all except the clay ones. In this case only wiping is done. I just now told you about it. What did I say? With the moving images. Okay, you have the option of doing all kinds of Abhishek. Abhishek means you pour certain things, you know. I'm sure those who have seen uh, the Guru Purnima celebration or the celebration throughout the year that happens over here, the ceremonies are performed. And in those ceremonies, 
different different panchamrut and all these kind of things are used there are flowers put and chandanam and this and that and water washing with warm water and you know all kinds of things all these are particular order they have to be done so he is saying that in certain cases where you cannot do this where it's a clay image so you can't do that so you can do it in a in a sacrificial ground you can do this kind of worship we go to the next verse we are doing chapter 22 verse 15 the worship of a sincere devotee in images should be done with the choicest offerings that are available in the heart it should be done with only mental offerings now offerings is the most important part i told you that all these ceremonies have to be done with certain things to be offered in a particular sequence and an order if you have a panditji at home or you can call him or you can call a panditji he will perform those things if you don't know because most of the people today don't know much about it yeah, of course there is youtube and in the youtube you can see and do it that's very good because even the panditji what they do they will put their phone on and they will read from that they don't know nowadays many things so it's all right that doesn't matter really so we just let it be and he is krishna is telling us how these things have to be done you have to do sincere devotee the worship of a sincere devotee in images should be done in the choicest offerings the word choicest is very very important when you buy something for yourself let us say you are buying a gold chain or you are buying flowers for yourself how much money do you spend on that you spend a lot of money isn't it you want the clothes which are the best of the clothes but when a person goes to the temple they want to buy the cheapest of the flowers cheapest they will haggle and argue with those people over there buy the cheapest of the flowers if they have to give a peda also you know a sweet they will go and buy the cheapest sweet possible why because it's an offering it's 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 something which is terrible in some places they offer biscuits some places they offer liquor bottles i don't know what all things nowadays they offer and everywhere it is contaminated everywhere it is terribly horrible i mean it's completely were not worth using also at such places that is the reason why he says the choicest of the things to be offered he is not telling you to offer some trash he is telling you if you can offer for yourself something nice why not offer to me also so krishna says give me the choicest of the offerings and that should be given to me or in your heart do what is called a mental offering so we go to the next verse we are doing chapter 22 verse 16 in images of Uddhava, it's the bathing and decoration which are dearest to me in the sacrificial ground the locating of the deities and in fire oblation soaked in ghee so in these three cases he is giving us the way in which how it is done first he says when you are doing it to the image the bathing of the image is very very important and the decoration see you have to do the most beautiful decoration of all if you have seen some of these very beautiful temples in india you will find that they really make a very beautiful decoration for the lord so even in your case if you find that you can decorate me so if you are seeing my image just clean me up thoroughly and then decorate me by means of flowers garlands this that all those things and if you are doing it let us say in the sacrificial places can you locate the deities See, location of the deities is extremely important. I don't know whether you have seen this. You will find that sometimes they will touch their shoulders, their ears, their head. Those Panditjis, you must have seen them doing. They are actually doing, they are identifying the different, different places where these gods are there in the sacrificial ground. Got the answer? And if it is there on the earth, where there is a sacrificial ground so there are certain location south north east west you know those kind of so in the north there is something there is east something like that so everywhere there are different different deities so we have to pray to those deities he'll do all kinds of so you will find the panditjis will tell you where to pray to and if you are doing it in the fire 
it is the way in which you offer pure ghee. <laughs> Again, it has to be a pure ghee. Don't offer me the cheap ghees, okay? Mm, right. So we move to the next verse. We are doing chapter 22, verse 17 and 18 of the Uddhav Gita. In the sun worshipping me through prayers is dearest to me. In water through water, even water offered by a devotee with faith is dearest to me. Not to speak of the perfume, incense, flower, light, various kinds of food, but a heap of offerings from one who is not a devotee fails to please me. Now this is what he is saying. So if you are worshipping the sun, you can do your worship of the sun. Sun is from the east, isn't it? So when you worship the sun, you have to worship me with that particular in the morning when you do the Surya Namaskar and all. You can do that, that way. That way you can purify and if you are doing it through water, pour the water in the water hmm? or if you are doing it through to an image then you have to use perfume don't you use perfume when you have you know when you have bathed and wanting to wear good clothes and all you apply perfume no? so even in case of krishna's image you have to apply perfume perfume is important incense sticks Incense, whatever incense that I have told you two. One is the jaw stick that is there, agarbatti, and the second one is the loban that you know uh, that is something that you light and yeah, camphor also. Yeah, and flowers, light, and various kinds of food. Put the flowers, tulsi, flowers, all those kind of things, light. Light the lights, the lamps, the diyas, the bhatis, everything, you know, everything over there. Different, different kinds of diyas are available. You can light them. And various kinds of food. Different, different kinds of food. Krishna is supposed to love 56 different kinds of chappan bhog, they call it. So you can make 56 varieties of food and offer it to him also. Doesn't matter. Or even if you make one, it's fine. Doesn't matter actually. But... If there is a person who is having no faith in Krishna and he is offering something to Krishna, he doesn't get the benefit of it. He is not a devotee and it is not going to please Krishna at all. Alright? So we move to the next verse. We are doing chapter 22 from the Uddhav Gita verse 19. After collect, first collecting the requisites of worship and purifying himself, he should have a seat on Kusa grass and seated thereon facing the east or north. He should worship me in the case of an immovable image. However, he should face that. Now, the most important part is this. First, you have to take a bath, become clean, wear good clothes, good clothes, fresh clothes, okay? And you have to purify your external as well as the internal. After that, you have to sit on a... Now, Kusa grass and all may not be available. You can take a high, you know, part we call it a high stool or something like that. Sit on it. And then what you are supposed to do? Face the east. That means you are sitting in the west and you are facing the east. Now east is on this side. You have seen if you, those who attend the Tuesday satsang in the morning, the sun is peeping from here. Isn't it? Behind me. That is why the east is on this side. That is the west. So you can sit in the west and pray looking towards the east. That is Allah. So even if you come over here, you will find that our rooms are made in such a manner that you, you stand in the west and you look towards the east. Or you can, you can sit in the south and look towards the north. Facing north. Always remember, facing north. That means your face has to be pointing towards north. You should be sitting in the south. Or you should be sitting in the west and facing east. This is the way how things are to be done. So you can do that. And case of, then you can worship me. In the case of an immovable image, he should face that. Now it so happens that sometimes, sometimes there are Swayambhu Linga, Swayambhu images. Krishna's image has come from the ground or something like that has happened. You will find that the image is fixed in the ground. When the image is fixed in the ground, you have no choice. You have to stand in front of the image only and pray, isn't it? So don't bother your head about east, west, north, south and all that. No directions necessary. You just stand in front of the image and pray to it. 
all right so that is how right now so we go to the next verse we are doing chapter 22 verse 20 having located the deities in his own body he should place the principal mantra of my image and purify it with his hand he should duly purify the pitcher filled with sacred water for sprinkling now this is again now first and foremost like i said to you there are places in the body where the particular deities are hmm? sometimes i have given you those answers all right so in different different parts of the body different different gods stay all right so first you have to identify them touch them wherever they are give them their you know the prayers that are supposed to be done and after that with my principal image what is the principal mantra in my image what is the principal mantra whatever the mantra which your guru has given don't don't look at me and say you know oh guruji i don't know the mantra don't worry krishna's mantra is there no problem you can say krishna's mantra are krishna are krishna also you can say doesn't matter <laughs> whatever mantra that you want whatever your guruji might have given use that all right and purify it with his hand he should duly purify the pitcher filled with sacred water for sprinkling even the pitcher of water that is there that also needs to be purified right we go to the next verse we are doing chapter 22 verse 21 he should sprinkle that water in the place of worship or the requisites of worship and on the him, on himself and put in three vessels some of the water and the things prescribed for each i don't think i have to explain this to you you have to sprinkle the first first you have to clean the vessel itself okay the vessel better be clean take the water in the pot and even purify that water okay purification by means of mantra can be done putting a little ganga water in it is can be done or just sprinkling on a little water here and there can be done so purify these vessels okay the worshipper should purify the three vessels meant for water to wash the feet for the welcome offerings oh, sorry sorry i think i jumped one verse he should sprinkle the water on the place of worship or the requisites of worship requisites means whatever other things that you have kept over there the fruits flowers and all those things you can take the the grass and then do like that all right and put in three vessels some of that water and the things prescribed for each so we move to the next verse chapter 22 verse 22 from the uddhav gita the worshipper should purify the three vessels meant for the water to wash the feet for the welcome offerings and for the water to wash the mouth with the mantras namas to the heart swaha to the head and vashat to the hair of the crown respectively in all with the gayatri so everybody knows the gayatri mantra right so gayatri has to be said so when you are worshiping him the worshipper should purify the three vessels meant for the water to wash the feet first vessel to wash the feet i'm sure those who have come over here have seen the vessel is used for washing feet that is number one for the welcome offerings whatever offerings that are there that has to be washed and for the water to wash the mouth of the mantra so they will use it for the taking it in the mouth you must have seen you know like when the pandit ji will offer you something huh? so you take it and then you drink it you have seen that so that hmm? always right hand hmm? take it in the right hand okay not in the left hand you do it like this so that way so that is the third thing right so when you are doing that you have to say namas to the heart so when you are doing it to the heart second time it is swaha to the head and wash up to the hair on the crown. This is what we do, isn't it? Right. And at that time, you have to say the Gayatri. Alright, so we move to the next verse. Chapter 22, verse 23 of the Uddhav Gita. Having purified the body with air and fire, you should meditate on the subtle and the supreme form of mind as Narayana, seated in the lotus of the heart which the Siddhas reflect at the end of the Nada. Now, again, you have to close your eyes at that point you have purified the body you have used the water whatever it is necessary to meditate on the form the form which is there which means you have to close your eyes and meditate on the subtle form of mind which is in the form of narayana remember 
Narayana is the one which is the unmanifest to the manifest. Unmanifest to the manifest. Correct? Remember, I am not going to repeat it once again. So the Narayana form is the one who is sleeping like this over that sea, you know, the sea of milk huh? with the snake, right? You know that form, that particular form has to be worshipped. So remember that Narayana form and pray to him, seated in the lotus of his heart, lotus of the heart, which the Siddhas reflect, the Siddhas, all the Siddhas that are there, the, the people, those the great uh, you know, sages or saints who are having Siddhis, there are Ashta Siddhas. Astasiddhis. They are there. They reflect at the end of the Nada. End. Om. The mm, that comes now, end of the Nada. That. That particular thing. Right. So we move to the next verse. So we are doing chapter 22, verse 24 of the Uddha Gita. Identifying himself with that form and imagining it as pervading his body, he should mentally worship it, being one with that, he should invoke it and put it in the image etc. Locating the deities in the various parts, worship me. Now this is a mental worship, where you are doing this worship mentally in a meditative state. So identifying himself with that form, the form of Narayana which is there, you have to identify yourself with that form, consider the form inside your body. Alright, it's as if it is pervading in the body, you should mentally worship it, being one with that. You have to be one with that form. Mentally you are one with that form. You should invoke it and put the image etc. Locating the deities in various parts of the body. So if you have seen that particular form, the Padmanabh Swami or the, you know, the Adishesha, you, know, you will find that there are various deities surrounding you. You have seen that. As if imagine your whole body is like that, Identifying the various gods that are there present, demigods that are there inside, you are praying to them. In that way you can worship me. So, we go to the next verse. Hmm. I think we should be able to complete it tomorrow. So, let us see how much we can do today. So we are doing chapter 22, verse 25 and 26. Having conceived my cot, the, the, um, the way in which he lies, with the attributes such as virtue, etc., at the nine powers and that of the eight petal lotus, with the effulgent pericarp and stamens, he should, for the achievement of prosperity and liberation, as set forth in the Vedas and Tantras, offer me with both kinds of mantras, water for washing the feet and the mouth, welcome offerings and other seed. Now, he is giving an understanding. Those who have seen the image of Narayana, Padmanabh Swami, you know, Sri Ranga, I am sure those who have gone to these temples, you must have seen the form which is there lying on the Adishesh. You have to visualize that form. That is the cot on which he is sleeping. The snake coils are there, isn't it? You must have seen that. And in that there are all these different, different Shaktis are there. They are right around him. In the Eight petal lotus. Now always remember, this all this you are imagining in your heart only inside your body itself. All this is being imagined in your heart. This is called the way in which you can pray. It is by means of meditation. Meditation is most of it is imaginative. But you have to visualize that inside of your being. So how you visualize? You have to visualize it in this particular format. So he is saying, with the eight petal lotus, with effulgent pericarp and stamens, he should for the achievement of prosperity and liberation, as set forth in the Vedas and Tantras, offer me with both kinds of mantras. So offer him the prayers with, with devotion, dedication and reverence. Bow down your head, go in a deep state and then you pray to him in this particular form. So, with both kinds of mantras, now when you are doing this, mentally, you may not be using water, but you can wash the feet, the mouth, etc. Remember the previous verse, you can do that mentally, alright? And welcome offerings, as if you are offering one, one item at a time, you can do that. Then, we go to the next verse. 
we are doing chapter 22 verse 27 he should next worship my weapons the disudarshana the conch panchajanya the club the sword the bow the arrow the plow the mace and also the ornaments the jewel kaustuba the garland and the curl of hair on the chest called the shri vatsa so first worship the weapons shankha chakra gada padma you know this four four arm form of his so you have to first do that first the disc sudarshan the sudarshan is always there in the right hand and the conch you have seen the conch is here the club the sword the bow the arrow the plow and the mace all these are there in his entire being so then he has the jewel kaustub the kaustub is over here the garland the tulsi mala or the garland which he is wearing and the curl of hair on the chest on krishna's dark body krishna is a dark person you must be knowing and on his body he has got a white tuft of hair there is a white tuft of hair which is called the shri vatsa okay this white tuft of hair is also to be prayed to then we go to the next verse 28 and 29 from chapter 22 of the uddhav gita he should worship with welcome offerings etc nanda sunanda garuda prachanda chanda mahabala bala Komoda, Komukdekshana, as well as Durga, Ganesha, Vyas, Viv, Vishwaksena, the Gurus and the Gods all stationed in their respective places facing me. Remember, the form of Narayana is lying in a particular form. Right round him, all these other people that are there, Nanda, Sunanda, Garuda. Garuda is his Vahan, which you know, right? And all these other gods that are there, Durga, Ganesha, Vyasdeva is there, Vishwaksena is there, all the gurus are there, you must have seen all those people are praying to him. The demigods that are there, they are all stationed in different, different locations. So you just pray to all these, as if in the body. This is the mental worship that you are doing. Okay, we go to the next verse. We have just one verse left now the time is getting up so we are doing chapter 22 verse 30 31 from the uddhav gita having got the means he should always bathe me with water scented by sandal ushira camphor saffron agalocham and such mantras as swarnagarma hymns the stanzas of the mahapurusha the purush sukta the samas called rajana and so on so he is giving an idea what you can do as is your means now you may be a rich man or you may be a poor person, whatever the old, whatever you can afford, you should do this. You can use sand, you know, scented things, scented by sandal. Now what can you scent? Everything, his body and other things by means of a sandal. That is sandalwood, you know, sandalwood, rubbing it, you get the sandalwood that you can do. Ushira. Ushira is the grass which is there. Hmm? Ushira is that khas khas grass that is there. You know, those who come over here, you will see that we use the agarbattis made of khas khas. Hmm? Khas, we call it. It is not the khas khas which is um, not the one which is used for cooking purposes. Khas, K H U S. Right? This is that particular Ushira. Camphor, you know, camphor, saffron. Okay. Now, all the loban and all that, that is there. And you have to say mantras, that is the Swarnagarma, the stanzas of the Mahapurusha, the Purush Sukta. All this I know for sure. Most of you don't know anything about it, but those who know can do it. And if you have YouTube or if you have some phone and all, you can play that over there. The Samasa, Rajana and so on. So all these kind of prayers can be done by offering him all these things. Now we are going to stop over here because we will be now continuing the way in which the worship is to be done tomorrow. Alright. So we have stopped at verse 31. So we will continue from verse 32 onwards tomorrow. So take care. I am sure some of you might have written down what has been said and you can use it for doing your prayers. Alright. So tomorrow the rest of the things will be explained to you. So take care. Have a great evening. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.